you take that that cruiser hull, it's built for speed and stealth, and you place a lot of weight on top of it. Yeah. I can imagine that when you went into a typhoon situation and the seas that you're operating in, yeah. what was that like? Because you had some real experience. We, we would roll and dip the catwalk on one side, then roll over and dip the catwalk on the other side. So it was a bit scary. So how many degrees of, of turn was that? That's, 18, 19, I, I've forgotten, but it was it was enough to uh, to, to get catch the attention of the ship wet. Yes, that's that's fascinating. But but that that hurricane was uh, was unfortunate. Uh, uh, no one knew it was coming, uh, and they they criticized Halsey, but he had no idea. We had a a uh, what we call a weather guesser aboard, a, an aerographer, and he. Uh, I talked to him. He said, "There's no, there's no knowledge of what this is. The seas have come up and the winds have come up, but we don't know what's happening." And they, he conferred with the other aerographers, and they, uh, they finally said, "Well, maybe it's a typhoon, and maybe not." But meanwhile, we were hitting it on and off. But we came in early that morning. We'd been out all night, and we'd exhausted much of our. Uh, Aviation gas. So we had we had we were always the first one to get a, a carrier to start pumping, and the sea was about uh, it was pretty high, and the wind about 30 knots. But we we got alongside the oiler and started pumping gas. And I had I had the 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 foredeck, and we had a chief warrant boatswain bait, and he said. Please call the bridge and tell them that this is awfully hard. We had a tow line over. We used a tow line in those days. We don't use it anymore. But uh, it was an eight-inch hawser, and it was awfully hard to handle on that wet deck. And we got it over, and uh, the boat said, "Everybody get back, get back off the foredeck." And so we all got around behind the 40-millimeter gun, and within seconds afterwards that eight inch holes are part of it bounced back and, and it was very powerful but didn't hit anybody but the also the deck saw it so he broke away from the the oiler and said uh, we've got enough now we have enough to support us but it got worse and worse thereafter it kept going uh, uh, I, I had the deck that afternoon i had the 12 to one 12 to 4 watch as officer of the deck. And by that time, we really couldn't do much because these huge waves would tower above. And I, I one time, I went up on deck when I had the deck saying to the quartermaster, how much was, I saw the anemometer spinning around and it spun off of its wheel and went like a helicopter all the way into the, uh, the water on the port side. I said, how fast was it going? And the quartermaster said, well, before, it's, before it broke, it reached 114 knots, which was pretty good in those days for a carrier. But we, we managed to make through all right, but Admiral Halsey said, uh, we can no longer maintain formation. Steam on your own and save your ship. So we all headed into the seas, and that meant into the wind, usually. and. Uh, we, while I was there, the, the forward edge of the flight deck was rolled back on by a, a heavy wave that we went into. We couldn't we couldn't stop it. We couldn't turn right or left because if we had, we'd been caught in the in the the waves, and we would never have been able to get out of it. But I could see the destroyers coming by, doing everything they could to avoid collision. They were using engines and rudders and everything. They had a terrible time with the destroyers, but they did well. We lost three, uh, Spence, Monaghan, and one other. But I, I do recall that uh, all of the ships reported damage, and we had a picture of it, two, two planes on the flight deck that smashed, and they were gassed up and ready to be brought up to, to fly that night and the gasoline spilled out on the hangar deck and it was sloshing back and forth 100 octane gasoline but the marines bless them they had the compartment just below the flight deck and they could smell the gasoline 
and they had a, 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 a ladder coming up on the flank. So they all boiled out and they got uh, anything they could grab and, and started bailing the gasoline out and dumping it over the side. They took garbage cans and, and uh, waste baskets or waste uh, scoops and scooped the water up into it and pretty soon we didn't have a fire because they got rid of the gas. That was that was that picture you saw of the uh, of the planes that were damaged. We we uh, we lost uh, chief squatters with the four ships, and the chiefs had on the on the bulk had some uh, light uh, some uh, large. Six by six foot steel plates, about three quarter inch, that were used in, in repairing in case we had a problem. And those broke loose. And so every time we'd roll, those big sheets of steel would roll back and forth. And they knocked off all the, all of the legs off all of the tables and all of the chairs. And um, it could have caused a lot of damage. Of course, no one could be in there. But one of the chiefs got a welding torch and he held on to the overhead and dropped down and, and he tacked them down to the deck. He welded them to the deck to keep them from damaging the ship. It was, it was an amazing situation. Everyone did things like that because they had to. I was on deck uh, checking on the planes that were tied down to the tie down uh, and keeping the, uh, the bridge in form if there was too much slack in the wires that we had holding the planes down. And there were, there were enlisted men out, both in some aviation, both of things, who were tightening up the, uh, but we made one real heavy roll and they grabbed for the tie downs and missed. And all three of them went over the side in the heaviest possible weather. The captain called the, sh the destroyer the stern and said, we have three men overboard. Please be watching for them but we never heard. I don't know if they got them or not, but we never got them back. Wow. But it was, it, was a, it was a difficult situation for everybody.